to another episode of Big Sticks. Guys, today we are going to roll hot and fast on the pit barrel cooker. What we're going to make is pulled pork and we're going to use Cosmo Q's Dirty Bird and Honey Killer Bee. We'll do a full-on review of how those things taste. Let's just get right on into it, folks. Let's get this over here. Let's give it a pat dry. Just take off the excess, excess moisture. We're gonna do a little trimming on this. Um, there are some glands in here that I wanna remove and some, uh, some silver skin. All right, let's see. We just want the good fat that's gonna render on here. So I'm gonna take this out right here. There's a gland in here that nobody wants to eat. I'm just gonna get up underneath it and cut it out. You can see it right here. And it comes all the way across. All the way down to around here. The thing about Smithfield is that virtually all of their pork products have phosphates already in them. And so you really don't need to do any injections unless of course you're just looking to add, um, unless you're looking to add flavors to it. I'm gonna split this open a little bit. We're gonna take some of this silver skin out. Again, this stuff does not cook well. It doesn't taste good. Probably some of you are wondering what phosphates are and what do they do? Well, phosphates are kind of these, these little uh, molecules that get in there and they hold on to protein and they hold on to moisture. So let's get you a look at this, all right? Split it open there, remove the silver skin and gland. Let's get her seasoned up. Just a little bit of oil as a binder. Nothing too crazy, right? So first coat, coat is gonna be Dirty Bird, and we're gonna put this on thick, right? Ain't no sense in fooling around. You got a big old piece of meat here, and it's gonna need a lot of seasoning. Second coat is gonna be that Honey Killer Bee. Put that right over the top. Dirty bird. Honey killer bee. It's my first time using Cosmo Q stuff. So we're gonna find out if this is you know worth all the rave reviews. Alright. Let's let this sweat. Gosh, that looks beautiful already. Looks like you could use a little extra attention. So far, I gotta tell you, I'm really liking the way this stuff goes on. The size of the granules of this really allows it to sort of melt as the meat starts to sweat. And it looks like this is gonna create an incredible bar. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna let this sweat out for about 10 minutes or so. I've got the pit barrel rolling outside and it's coming up to temperature. And once we reach that point, we're just gonna, we're gonna throw it on there. We're not gonna hang it. We're gonna stick it on the 18 inch grill grate that it comes with. All right, so here we go. This thing has been sweating out for a good 10 to 15 minutes now. The smoke from the pit barrel is just a rolling and I feel like it's prime time to just get this on. Now, the way I'm gonna put this on is, I know there's an argument about this, fat side up or fat side down, I'm going fat side down simply because I want that fat buffer between the heat and the grate. So 
fat side down. All right, let's close her up. So now that it's on, I'm thinking it's gonna take somewhere in the neighborhood of three to three and a half hours to come up to 160, 165 degrees, somewhere in that neighborhood. You know, while the pit barrel's rolling, and I think this is probably one of the main reasons I really, really like using the pit barrel is that I can kind of just let it do its thing, right? Like it holds temperature so steady that I don't need to tend to the flame. So I guess, I'll just clean up around the house, go mow the lawn, maybe even watch a movie. So until we meet again, folks, when it's time for wrapping, I'll see you then. Here we are, it's around about three hours, maybe a little, little after. It's temping kind of a little all over the place. Some parts it's like 159, another part it's like 163. Uh, the middle is temping at about 155. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it and we're gonna get it wrapped, so. Let's get out there. All right, here's what it's looking like. Pretty beautiful if you ask me. All right, so here we are at my wrapping station. What I have here is about, uh, I don't know, about three quarters of a cup of light brown sugar. I'm going to add some of that seasoning mixture, the Dirty Bird and Honey Killer Bee, to the base here. But I'm also going to use some of Cosmos Q's uh, Cherry Apple Habanero Rib Glaze. Just a, another layer of flavor, if you will. A lot of sugar in this, I gather, just judging by how thick it is. We are gonna double wrap this. Let's put some on top here, right? Why, cause why not? Oh God, this stuff looks good. It says it's spicy or hot, so eh, we'll see. More of the seasoning, the rub if you will. Get a good coat on her. And let's get her wrapped up. Now, those sugars, they're gonna turn into a liquid. And so, that's why I wanna double wrap this. So we're gonna get this wrapped up pretty tight. This is heavy duty foil, by the way. And for an added layer of protection, I'm just gonna put it inside of a foil pan as well. Just so that we don't get any spillage. Back out to the pit barrel we go. All right, foil pan going back in. Close it back up. Now that it's back on the pit barrel, we're gonna let it rock out for another hour and a half or so until she temps out at about 207 to 208, at which point we're gonna pull it. All right, so I just temped it. It's at 208 as we stand right now after an hour and 45 minutes out on the pit. Let's bring it in. <sighs> yeah. That's pretty doggone juicy. It's pretty much meat jello. That's what I'm looking for. Let's wrap this up and we'll get it in a cooler. So let's take this doubled over saran wrap. Wrap it over the top here. I like to use this styrofoam cooler uh, instead of my, my regular coolers. Wow, that's hot. We'll close the lid. And then I'm just gonna let it hang out for about 30 minutes to an hour or so. But I think in the meantime, it's time for me to go be a dad again and I'll go pick up the kids from school. When we come back, we'll conclude this video. Here we go, moment of truth. Pick the kids up. Oh my goodness, that is still hot as 
I don't know what. Bye. Let's get this in here. Kind of trying to be gentle with this. I get the feeling it just wants to pull apart. Hence, pulled pork. And I guess the test really is, is does it pull out clean the bone? And I'd say, yes, it does. Definitely. That's pulling apart nicely. There's a good bit of smoke ring on there from the three hours on the pit. Oh yeah, yes indeed. That is what I'm talking about there. That looks incredible, I'm not gonna lie. Let's give it a test. All right, well, my biggest critics of all when it comes to my cooking, the children. You know, if they like it, it's gotta be good, right? Hey, ladies first, mister. Go. Uh, 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 Pick a piece and go for it. I'm getting multiple. You want that? I want that. <laughs> That's good. Right. Let me just go ahead and taste ah! it. It's very good. Mmm. 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 <laughs> for real, I'm not gonna lie. This is probably the best pulled pork I've ever had. And I'm not just saying that because, well, I made it. It is, it's good. Um, there is an incredible level of moisture to this, this uh, mm. pulled pork that mm. I haven't had before in the past. Mm. I'm probably gonna chalk that up to it being a Smithfield uh, pork butt in that it had phosphates in it because I didn't Did you just say it. butt? Yes. It's a pork butt. Ew! We're eating pork butt. Jonah, we're eating pork butt. <laughs> so I've got to try this in some other way other than a pulled pork sandwich, right? Like that is the all-time cliche thing to use this uh, with. And so I'm going to do it in nachos, although I think I want to do tacos too. Well, I'm thinking I can do that with this. So just got my Mission Tortilla chip rounds down and I'm gonna put some Juanita's nacho cheese sauce on here. So we're gonna put some sour cream dollops all around here. So sour cream down. Let's get some of this pulled pork on here. I don't know if you guys can see this, but man, this stuff is juicy. Another must have on nachos for me is tomatoes. Gotta have the green onions, right? Green onions adds color, texture, and flavor. I think it just makes it look amazing. Still need one last thing. And for me, that is Mazetta's sliced tamed jalapeno. They add that nice little cut of acidity that pairs well with the sweetness of the pulled pork. Here we are. This, that thing right here. The nachos, pulled pork nachos. Make sure I get some that's got some tomato on it, some sour cream, green onions, and gotta have a jalapeno. Gotta have a jalapeno. Oh man. All right, let's see here. Oh. <laughs> Yes, indeed. These nachos. Gotta have me another bite. Mmm. 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 <laughs> there is a part of me that can eat this all day, every day. Totally changes my perspective on pulled pork, um, I'm gonna give all credit due to Cosmo Q's uh, seasonings and that rib glaze. My God, that adds a little 
extra, extra to the pulled pork itself. Man. Well, that's going to do it for me, folks. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And until next time, guys, from my kitchen to yours, Big Sticks out. This is a winner.